Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I'm actually going to do it. I'd like to talk through some ideas that I have about Jane Austen's female villains. And yes, I am using air quotes because in the grand scheme of things, her female antagonists, foils, aren't generally as menacing as her male villains, who I will leave for a separate video. Of course, we could debate exactly how much damage they do in the comments down below, possibly forever, which is why her books have become as beloved as they are. My inspiration for this video came from partially the What the Austin podcast, which I have been loving listening to this past year. It's hosted by the lovely Izzy, and I will link the information for the podcast and for her personal YouTube channel down below because they are both lovely, cozy, bookish little corners to inhabit, and it always brightens up my day. But in any case, she and a variety of guests have debated in past episodes and even in a few more recent episodes the pros and cons of Lucy Steele, Mary Crawford, comparing Isabella Thorpe and Caroline Bingley. And so I thought I would jump in and give my thoughts. I'm not going to call this a definitive ranking because even as I talk out some of my points, my opinions on where these characters might fall may change. So I'm going to start off with Mrs. Elton in Emma. She to me is on the lower end of Austen's antagonists. Yes, she is horrendously annoying. Yes, she is very presumptuous. Yes, she is vaguely racist at times. The incident with dressing up like, Austin uses the phrase, gypsies, is really quite derogatory toward the travelers or Roma people. But overall, the people directly around her don't give her jabs and her condescension that much power, so therefore she doesn't feel threatening. She doesn't feel like she's going to overturn any points of the plot or anyone's overall happiness. Slightly above Mrs. Elton in the Mean Girl category are Caroline Bingley in Pride and Prejudice and to a lesser extent Mrs. Hurst and Elizabeth Elliot in Persuasion. I picked Elizabeth over Mary because Mary Musgrove, to be honest, is mainly concerned with herself. Elizabeth and Caroline are mainly concerned with themselves by putting other people down. That is how they build themselves up. However, as horrible as it is to be on the receiving end of that, they are very straightforward about it. You know that's how they are going to act, and that is how they act to almost everyone around them. So you know what you're getting and you can mentally prepare yourself for that, which makes it slightly more bearable. I will say, however, because that was a point made on the What the Austin podcast, and I do agree, but I was thinking about it more recently as well. That is how Caroline Bingley acts towards Elizabeth. Elizabeth knows how Caroline feels about her. Caroline makes no attempt to hide the way she feels about her. She's very open and honest about it. But if we saw the story through Jane's perspective, I feel like we would get a very different side of things because she does, through Jane's eyes, seem to genuinely be pursuing a friendship. So to have that and then the complete 180 that she pulls when they all go to London and they want to distance themselves from the Bennets, that would be devastating. So Elizabeth Elliot is very straightforward. Caroline Bingley is mostly straightforward in how insulting she is. But there is that little bit of a twist because it does depend on who you are. Then we come to the ultra complicated Mary Crawford in Mansfield Park. I know she is a very polarizing character. Some people absolutely love her. Some people absolutely hate her. The people who love her tend to 
really despise the people who hate her. So this is what I'm going to say about her. Yes, she is far livelier than Fanny. Yes, that liveliness does tend to mirror the Elizabeth Bennets, the Emmas. However, my main problem with Mary Crawford is twofold. Number one, she cannot read a room. She is entitled to think whatever she would like about the church and society. And having grown up the way she did, I can understand why she would feel that way. However, she cannot figure out that voicing those opinions in front of deeply religious people like Fanny and Edmund is not a good idea. And secondly, the fact that she expects them to change, especially Edmund. The fact that she pursues Edmund so much and expects him to change his entire moral compass, his fundamental character for her, is ridiculous. That's her downfall. We all know in modern dating you cannot change someone. And that blind spot is really quite huge for me. That, I think, is the problem with her. Then we come to what I feel is the top end of Austen's villains. Well, her young villains. We'll touch on to older villains in a little bit. But the top end of her younger villains for me are these two. Lucy Steele in Sense and Sensibility and Isabella Thorpe in Northanger Abbey. These two to me are the absolute worst. I think because of their duplicity. Because they endear themselves to people, they play the best friend, the doting friend to a T, and then undermine you constantly. That I think is the most hurtful. I think Lucy Steele is isn't isn't easier to deal with at least because Eleanor is better informed about the world. She's much more emotionally mature so she recognizes what Lucy is doing and that makes it it doesn't make it more bearable but it's slightly easier on Eleanor that she can immediately recognize Lucy for what she is. Catherine, on the other hand, does not have that emotional maturity. She has very little experience. So she genuinely thinks Isabella is her friend and trying to help her for so long. And therefore that duplicity, that betrayal, when it reveals itself to her, is I think doubly hurtful. Then finally, I couldn't end this video without touching briefly on two of Austin's older female antagonists, villains, whatever we want to call this group of characters. And those are firstly Lady Catherine de Bourgh, who again thinks she is doing the right thing, but is utterly insulting to everyone, condescending to everyone in a negative sense as well as in a positive sense. However, she is not easily ignored like Mrs. Elton. A lot of characters do pay a great deal of attention to what she says and that therefore gives her power and eggs her on to even greater heights as well as a number of other factors like class and whatnot. I, however, can't take her seriously because she always does rather remind me of one of my grandmothers who did exactly the same thing and who wanted to have control of every conversation and she was always right and she knew best and she was going to give you advice on how to run your life. And my mother and I never really paid attention to it. We were very much Lizzie Bennets and we knew how to undercut it, which made it slightly more bearable. Fanny, however, does not have that ability and Mrs. Norris is 10 times worse than Lady Catherine. She does not have the social clout to help the idea that, oh, maybe she could give me advice. Perhaps she could, you know, behave charitably towards me or be telling me these things in the name of charity. She does not have the social clout or position really 
and the way she treats Fanny is truly evil. It is that evil stepmother way of thinking that you are nothing. You are not worthy of anything. You are not deserving of anything, charitable or otherwise. And I think that really contributes to Fanny's sense of self. If you were told that and made to feel that way for eight to ten years of your life, you would start to believe it and it would have an effect on how you thought of yourself and how you conducted yourself. I think that explains a lot of what people see as negative traits in Fanny. So those are my short and brief ramblings on Austin's female villains, if you will. If you can come up with a better name for them, let me know down below. If you have other thoughts about any of these characters, let me know down below. If you have other characters that you feel could also count as antagonists, list them down below. I'd be happy to entertain that and debate that. Like I said, I will do a video on her male villains at a separate time, maybe this Jane Austen July, perhaps next Jane Austen July. But either way, I hope you enjoyed these ramblings. I hope they inspired you a little bit, or at least gave you something to think about the next time you reread one of these novels. And until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.